Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks again for coming out. As always, delighted to be back in Hull for what is our third show here in uh, seven months, fastly becoming uh, our most popular city to visit. And we're delighted to come back here with a great show on February the 22nd and uh, another big night of boxing for Hull as we continue the development of, of course, two of your brightest stars in Luke Campbell, NBA Olympic champion, of course, the IBF international champion, Tommy Coyle, but also some wonderful big title fights, 50-50 fights on the bill as well, as well as some great young talent that we're nurturing through for British boxing. Talk a little bit about the show, and some people that you won't necessarily have seen, a young fighter called Lerone Richards from London, um, a great young talent, Charlie Payton from Hull will be making his debut. Tony Dodson, uh, the former super middleweight champion, is on the bill. Of course, Joel Haig and Zach Collins, um, now managed by Dave Coldwell, um, looking to step Zach up on the night. He's, he's a great young fighter, has great support throughout the area. And then two really fascinating fights for the British titles for that, that coveted Lonsdale belt. Firstly, Gavin McDonnell will fight Lee Wood for the vacant British super bantamweight title. So I think it's a, a wonderful fight. Lee is in um, the Canaries right now in training camp with, with Kel Brook and others. I'm delighted that Gavin is here joining us today. Of course, his brother, uh, the former undefeated British European Commonwealth and IBF world champion. Going to have an, uh, another world title shot in 2014. It's a big fight for the family and a chance for uh, Gavin to pick up that belt, which Jamie doesn't have at the moment. So I know there's a lot of banter between them. And, and another fascinating fight with one of our recent signings, Darren Hamilton, uh, and his... Uh, Shy manager Spencer Fearon as well, who's we're delighted he's made the trip up today. We know he's very busy with his Sky Sports commitments. Um, taking on Curtis Woodhouse, who you know is managed by a good friend of ours and associate Dave Coldwell, who you know we've had on, on a numerous and numerous amount of shows before. Always great to have Curtis on. Uh, a great fighter gives tremendous value for money. And, and taking on a very underrated Darren Hamilton, who has plans for the bigger picture. And Curtis already stated this is his last professional bout in boxing. I'll let him talk more about that later. I've heard a lot of people say that before, but maybe this is for you. And of course, you know, the two great young fighters from Hull who we expect huge things for in 2014. Firstly, Tommy Coyle, the IBF international champion, will face Argentinian Daniel Brizuela, former Olympian, just lost a close decision to Dowd Jordan for the IBO world title. It's a great step up for a Tommy. After the John Simpson fight, Brizuela is very tough. He's game. And we move forward. I've already spoken about my plans for Tommy to face Kevin Mitchell in an IBF eliminator in the summer. That's still very much the plan. I think it's a wonderful fight. And um, Tommy's working very hard with Jamie Moore. They've got a great setup there. And I think uh, he's, he's hugely dedicated to the sport. Someone who's really impressed me. And in a wonderful division um, domestically. And so many big fights out there. And I think Coyle versus Mitchell is certainly one we want to make for the summer. Of course, Luke Campbell as well, taking part in his fourth contest. Looked fantastic in his professional career so far, taking it to it like a duck to water. He'll fight Scott Moises, um, who's eight wins, eight losses. Very experienced. That'll be Luke's first eight-round contest. Um, Moises coming off a win and gave um, Mitch Mitchell Smith a great fight for the Southern Area title. Over 10 rounds, already been in a few 10-round fights. Never been stopped throughout his career. And it's the first step up for Luke Campbell. And uh, we can't wait. Before everybody talks on this table, I want everyone to say a few words. I just want to thank, as always, um, the people of Hull, the media in Hull. Now, this is a great city to come to. That's why we've been here three times in seven months. We go to some great cities, Liverpool, Glasgow, Wales, and we've seen such a wonderful response already in 2014 to ticket sales. And again, in Hull here, we're expecting a packed out Hull Ice Arena. You know, I say a lot as a promoter that British boxing is booming at the moment, but I, I really mean it. And it's, it's not just promotion hype, it's real talk. The ticket sales at every show across the country are fantastic. And uh, we want to thank everyone here for their support, as always. The atmosphere for the last show here was fantastic. I really like the whole arena. I think it's got a great character to it and personality. And we're really excited to come back here on the 22nd. So to say a few words, we're going to start down on the far end. Zach Collins, back. And I know uh, when you stepped out of the ring last time on November the 2nd, you told me that you were ready now for a step up and obviously moving to Dave. I think you're ready to do so. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm nine fights unbeaten, um, so I'm, I'm ready for a step up now. I've had my apprentice. Um, I've moved camps, um, moved promoters and managers to, to Dave, um, 
and my first fight with David is going to be against an unbeaten kid. So it's going to be it's going to be a test. It's going to be something that I'm looking forward to. Um, I train as hard as I come, so I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to be ready. Thank you, Zach. And Dave will hear from you shortly. Gavin, I know this is a big fight for you. I know you called it yourself 50-50. So when a, when a fighter says that, they know it's a, a, a real fight and a proper fight, but yeah. a great chance for the British title. Yeah, it's a 50-50 fight. Um, both 11 and 0, and um, it's going to make for a great fight. I've, j I've done my duels with my uh, final eliminators, for British, so it's, uh, it's time to get it on and move up. And what do you know about Lee Wood? I mean, I've seen him, we've had him on a couple of our shows, talented young kid. Who... Yeah, he's a good fighter, do you know what I mean? You can also... say what you want because he's not here. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he's a good fighter, do you know what I mean? He's unbeaten. Um, we know a lot about him, so we're going to prepare, prepare for the fight, do you know what I mean? It's going to be a great fight, and uh, one I'm confident of winning. Great, and uh, one of the fights that I'm... I'm mostly excited about on this card as well as, as that is, is Hamilton against Woodhouse. I think it's a great, great fight. I'm going to let the, the managers say a few words first about their fighters and about, about the fight. And I'll start with, with the challenging camp, Dave Caldwell. Um, I think this fight's been talked about for a few years between me and, and Spencer, um, right back when we had Hamilton box on one of our shows at, at the Magna. Uh, Spencer was jumping up and down the side of the ring talking about fighting Curtis Woodhouse to the Rotherham public. Um, so there's been a lot of banter, a lot of a lot of talk throughout the years, but one thing that's changed is that Darren Hamilton's come to the forefront, whereas back then he was just this fighter on you know on the circuit like like that everybody else is when they're starting out. He's um, he's took a couple of last minute jobs and um, he shortcut his way straight to the top and become become a champion and. Um, one thing that we won't do is we won't underestimate Darren because he's a very good champion. He's not the best, um, most attractive fighter to watch, which I think is a reason why a lot of fighters um, out there and a lot of a lot of people, a lot of fans don't appreciate how good he is. He's very good at what he does. Uh, one thing that we do is we understand how good he is. So everything that Curtis has been doing is geared for a, um, a, a good and worthy champion. Um, you know, whatever way it's got to be, Curtis is ready to, to take this title. It's his opportunity from, the, from day one. When, um, when Curtis came to me, he said what his dream was, it was to become a British champion. It wasn't, it wasn't to become a world champion, it wasn't to become a unified champion or a superstar. He just wants to become British champion. And everything that we have done, the ups and the downs, everything that he's had in his career, it's all been built towards this one fight. Um, people can say anything they want, they, what they want about his losses. Losses build character. Losses show you what a fighter's got inside him. And um, the one thing I've always said is that if Curtis got his British title shot, I would never bet against him. And um, Spencer, I know that you've done a fantastic job for Darren. People don't know Darren's story. It's, it's fantastic. Like Dave said, he was, he was miles off the pace a few years ago. And now he's, he's beaten some of the very best at, at, light, at light welterweight. And uh, I know... We've all got bigger plans beyond this, and you're certainly backing your men. Um, number one, I'd like to say this for everyone who's come out um, to support the, all the lads here. Could you give yourself a round of applause? Because that means a lot. Give yourself a round of applause, man. That means a lot. You know I mean, um, it's, it's like a dream to Darren for him to be sat with, like, he's got his own name tag on the front and stuff like that. So it's, it's just amazing. He's got all the cameras out on him. These, these things are great, man. You know what I mean? You've got Simon Templar, Eddie Hearn, you know what I mean? Who, <laughs> he's a saint, you know what I mean? Who's got these kind of things. And my good friend Dave Cool. people don't realize how close me and Dave Cool are. We're, we are really, there's not a week that doesn't go by where I don't get a phone call from Dave or vice versa. So it, this is something that, had, that kind of had to happen. I'm glad that it has happened um, because I know Curtis very and that's been going on on Twitter between myself and Dave Caldwell, but it's, it's, it's all love, and myself and Curtis, it's all love. They're actually my friends. Um, come the 22nd of February, um, he has to get beat up, but that's just part of life. But we, we're, it's all love, man. It's all love, and we're all mates, and that's the God's honest truth. And I lost it. The fact that you have um, two men fighting for the British title, and if you look on the historics, that the first time that um, a man of color was allowed to fight for the British title was 1948, and that was Randolph Turpin's brother, Dick Turpin. Um, that was the first time it ever happened. So to flip this page to now, you've gone some 65 years on, 
to see two men of color fighting for a British title showed you how far our country's moved on and how we are, we are living in the greatest country in the world because this country is full of opportunity. And um, the mere fact that Darren's got his British champion, it just means a lot, man. It just means so much to him. And so he, for him to win that British title outright, from a man who was homeless, a man that's been in, in, in kind of altercations in, in his home life where, where he had to leave Bristol to come to London and stuff like that. For him to do this here or to have you guys out here, it's, this, this is a measure of our country. Our country just brings opportunity. We live in the greatest country in the world. So Dave Corwell can have his plan and so can Curtis Woodhouse or Adam Booth or Gary Logan or whoever they're around. They don't make no difference because end of the Who? Don't forget Ryan Rhodes. Ryan Rhodes. Yeah, listen, listen, can't forget Ryan Rhodes. I've got to stop hanging out with you, though, Dave, because, like, Ryan Rhodes hangs out with you. He's lost his hair. Yeah, you know I mean, my hair's starting to recede now. Oh, can you stop? Hair. Can you stop? Yeah. Yes, it's receding. It's going it's further back than Naomi Campbell. I've got to stop hanging out with you now, man. You know what I mean? Why does, why does Dave call a tango, man? Don't you like a tango, man? Defensive. I'm not asking you a question. Orange is English. What? Where do you get Tango Man from? The Tango. Tango the Man's th orange. And, and you're orange. And I'm a. This is Dave Cool Orange. <laughs> really? Agree with me. You know when you've been Tango. Let's do Cool right now. No, man, let's get ready for the 20 second. I'm, I'm fed up in your area. I ain't talking no more, all right? <laughs> if you're going to insult, make sure it makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> Running behind people slapping them. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hi, Dave. On the back of people's heads. Come on, man. Calm down, man. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> now we're going to hear from the challenger, um, who I know this fight means a lot to, and, and delighted to have him back on our show, Curtis Woodhouse. First of all, thanks everyone for um, for coming out again and showing your support to to all us fighters. Um, I was speaking to Steffi Bull earlier, and. Uh, Without people coming out to support us, we're all unemployed. So um, we appreciate your support. I'd also like to thank um, Darren Hamilton, the champion, for giving me this opportunity to, um, to make my dream become a reality. Um, Darren's a fighter that, you know, even though <coughs> I give him plenty of stick, he's a, turn your phone off. <laughs> I give him, you'll I come around your house. Yeah, I give him. <laughs> <laughs> I give, uh, I give Darren plenty of stick, but he's a fighter that's got my um, utmost respect, you know, to, to come from where he's come from, to do what he's done, and now to be ranked as, in my opinion, the best fighter in Britain, obviously outside of, of Amir Khan, you know, the, he, he deserves my respect. And he's one of them fighters, when you watch him on tape, you think, he's rubbish, how can I not beat him? But he just keeps beating everybody, so something he's doing works, you know, so I respect that, you know, he's... He's, he's done it the hard way. He's been in people's backyards and, and won. He's, he's doing boxing like, um, not like a lot, of, a lot of fighters do. A lot of fighters have 10 weeks notice and then fight a kid who, who has four days notice. You know, Darren, Darren Hamilton's flipped it on the, on the other side, you know, and he's a worthy champion. I don't know how I'm going to win this fight yet. I haven't got a clue, but I'm going to win it. Um, I believe in destiny. And when I first got into the game, I said I was going to be British champion. And, uh, and I believe that everything's been destined towards that. If you ask Dave Caldwell, the, fir the, the worst five people that's ever walked in his gym, I'm not saying I'm the worst, but I'll definitely be in that top five. Um, when, I w when I walked in, I, I, I didn't know a left hook from a fish hook. So, um, so I've, I've had to learn as, as I've gone. And I've, I've, I've taken losses. Um, I've been knocked out twice. Um, but it's testament to my courage and, and my... Um, and my get up and go that I've always come back and I've got this opportunity um, and I've got to go and take it on the 22nd. It'll be my last fight, win, lose or draw and I am as going out as champion. Thanks, Kurt. Is it <laughs> Thank you. Just fascinating, before, before we go down, just people know about your story, you used to play football, what is it about, but, you know, why are you here? You know, I mean, I know you love the sport, and, but what is it about boxing that does this to you? I mean, you, you, you had what many young kids would describe as the great opportunity playing premiership football. Yeah. What turned you to boxing? What made you stay in boxing? And when you leave boxing after this fight, you know, what, what will you take from it the most? 
the, the, the thing is with, with football, when I was, I think I first started playing at 10 years old, um, didn't even know I was good at football. I started playing for the school team and uh, one of my dad's friends said to my dad, have you seen your lad play football? My dad said, no. And he said, you need to go and watch him play, he's good. So he came to watch me play and all of a sudden he realised I had talent. And from that day, my dream was always to play for England and Liverpool. I was born in 1980, so Liverpool were the best team around at that time. So that, that's what I set off on my mission, to become a professional footballer. <clears throat> now, when I actually made it as a professional footballer, when I actually got there, the dream was not what I thought it was going to be. and I, it, it left me a little bit empty. And uh, I started earning ridiculous amounts of money. I'm from uh, a place in Driffield called Northfield Crescent. Driffield's got one council estate in it, and that's it. So I'm, I'm from there and I've never had money. My family's never had money. Then all of a sudden money came along. And the thing that got me to being a professional footballer, I wasn't, I wasn't the best player, but I had the, the most dedication to get there. And once I got there, money changed everything. I took my eye off the ball. I used to train morning and afternoon. I used to out train everybody. But then as soon as I was financially secure, um, I stopped training in the afternoon. I was going out five, six nights a week, boozing, chasing women. Um, and everything just changed and, and I could never get that hunger back. So, and I, in between all that, I've always loved to fight and I, I've always loved boxing. Um, and I decided, uh, I think 23, 24, that I was going to retire from football. But I'm still a young man, so I needed something else to do. Um, and I wanted something to do that I was passionate about. And the only other thing I liked doing was fighting. Um, so I went to go and see Gary DeRue, who was an um, ex-British champion in Peterborough. I was playing for Peterborough United at the time and told him I want to be a professional boxer. Um, he thought I was nuts and I, I turned up at his gym every day for about two or three months then started sparring. Got beat up for six months to a year every single day, but I kept coming back, kept coming back. Um, and just pestered him into, into giving me an opportunity. And I retired from football and 10 weeks later I made my made my professional debut. But I just wanted to do something that I was passionate about and it wasn't about money, it was just about chasing a dream again. Because that's when I was at my best as a footballer, when I was just chasing the dream. I always say people that climb Mount Everest, it's not getting to the top of it that's the best bit, it's the climb. You know, and, and chasing the British title has always, has always drove me on. And that's why this is going to be my last fight, because if I win this title, nobody knows me better than I know myself. It, on the February 22nd, when I become British champion, I'll never be the same. The hunger won't be there. and It will still be there, but not as intense as it is right now. So I know fighters um, always know when it's time to go, but never go. I'll know exactly when it's time to go, and I'll, I'll be able to leave knowing that I've, uh, I've chased my dream. And I'll, I'll, at least I'll die knowing whether I was good enough or not. Nothing worse Very than good. dying Very not good. knowing. Curtis is also available for after dinner speaking when he has <laughs> mo motivational talks. And, uh, I'm not uh, cheap either. <laughs> no, well done, mate. Listen, I'll take my hat off to you. Thank you. The champion, who's also got a great story. Champion, rapper, musician. Hold on with the rapper bit. Exactly. <laughs> Hold on with the rapper bit. <laughs> but, um, Darren, no, a few words. Do you know what, yeah? Um, on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere I go, I'll keep getting asked. Questions, question after question. Come, let me just tell you some of the best ones. Darren, how on earth do you make 140 pounds? Well, I'm a discipline champion. That's why I was always excel in the championship rounds. It was a wise decision to take a course in nutrition. Now I'm the biggest light water weight in the division. Darren, what's your thoughts on Ashley Fiafane fighting for the money team and his newfound fame? Mm, I wish him all the best. He was always my idol before we were rivals, fighting for the title. He taught me you could win away as the underdog under severe odds as we're all the same men fighting under God. Darren. Darren! Darren! Darren, why do all these fighters underestimate you? Underestimation is how I remember breakthrough. John Watson remains sour like a grapefruit. i never forget his face. It was like, how did he beat me? Just the same as these fighters that I defeat. Simply because my style looks easy on TV, but awkward in 3D. I leave the confidence flat like a CD. Darren, Ed suggested that you fight Chris Jenkins. Chris who? You know, Chris Jenkins, prize fighter champion. Chris Jenkins. I'd be the last prize fighter champion. And he was 10 times better. Tell Ed to be foolish to send him. A 12 round fight with me could be career ending. I don't mean to sound condescending, but it's gonna take more than three rounds to beat me. Does that mean you accept the challenge? Okay, send him or end him. Real champion, I ain't pretending. I don't run from the body or duck the body. Anyone who faces me, I will swell up and feel pain in their body. Darren. 
If you win the non-zebel outright, pardon? Sorry, excuse my jargon. When you win the non-zebel outright, what's your next move and who will you fight? Well, the European champion is Italian, so if I go to Italy, I'm not looking out to win it, so I fancy my chances against the Commonwealth champion. What's his name again? Oh, Willie Lemond. Well, I might take a fight in America, short notice. Um, like you did in the beginning. Like a 1920s old school fighter. Mm, you know, a man like me in my ever living. <laughs> Hard knocks for life. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna worry, I have to listen to that on the whole train journey. I, <laughs> I like all this. I think it's great, you know, personalities in sport is great. Well done you two. Darren, now some stuff from the heart. Yeah. British champion, big fight with Curtis and uh, uh, a new start for you and I know you don't want to look back now. Yeah, of course. Um I mean this goes from the beginning where where uh, Spencer was putting on shows, he was doing small hall, hall shows. Uh, I don't know if anyone been to a small hall show before, but uh, the, the, the actually starting on fighting on them kind of shows to being head of the bill on Sky is just like, you know, a dream. And, um, and Spencer knows that I'm one of these guys that I've been talking about this way a long time, you know, way before this happened. Anything I visualize in my life, it manifests. And, you know, and, for, and to visualize it and for it to come, to come true, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing, it's amazing, yeah. Good stuff. Good luck to you. Yeah. And uh, Tommy, I know obviously uh, <laughs> you and Luke have got a really hard. I that. mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we'll actually, no, we'll just wrap it up there. Uh, you know, um, you've got your own story as well. I'm not as sure yet it's as interesting as these two. I know some of and veg. <laughs> but um, we're delighted to bring you to the team. And um, you're a big part of our plans moving forward in Hull. Obviously, you've got your own aspirations to, to get that world title shot. And hopefully we can deliver that for you. Um, after the Simpson fight, tell us what's been happening and obviously looking forward to this fight against Brizuela. Yeah, of course. Now I'm delighted to be um, you know, a team member of the match room boxing. Um, it's going to be fantastic to, to perform and box again in Hull, Feb 22nd. Um, I've been training hard, you know, trained right over Christmas, stayed in great shape. That's allowed me to have a good camp coming back into the gym. You know, with Jamie, um, been working with Jamie and, you know, learning new stuff, practicing things what I don't do so good to make me a complete fighter. Uh, you know, I'm really excited about this this year, 2014. You know, if I come through this fight, or should I say when I come through this fight against Brazuela, you know, there's a massive, massive opportunity there um, against Kevin Mitchell, as Eddie's just, Eddie's just said. So this year's, you know, it could be an absolute massive year for me. And as daft as it sounds, you know, I've not even won a British title yet, but I could be fighting for a world title. And, you know, to be Hull's ever first world champion would just be, wow, be incredible and um, be a, just an absolute dream of mine. Thank you, Tommy. We look forward to that journey. And Luke, I know 2014, we've had, a, we've had various chats and it's the year I think you're ready to be stepped up and slung in. I think talking of, of British titles, that's certainly on the ambition list for 2014. Yeah, definitely, you know. We've got some big goals this year. Um, First things first, thank you for everyone coming. It's uh, it's brilliant to be back in Hull. Um, first fight for the year for me. Um, you know, best place to have it in Hull. You know, great support. Uh, we all remember the last show, which is fantastic. But I think the fighters on this top table today, I think it's going to put on the best show that Hull's ever seen. Um, I'm excited to be a part of it. And again, just as Eddie was talking there, you know, we're ready for the step ups. We work hard. We've never stopped working hard and after each performance we have in the ring, you know, we'll step up again and again and just keep going until we reach the top. And, um, you know, I'd like to thank Eddie for backing me and, you know, being a part of this and bringing this to Hull. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're going to break shortly for uh, a group photo and then I guess we'll do the uh, the face-to-face -face with uh, Darren and Curtis. Again, thank you so much for coming. You know, this is why... I believe, and I think today has given you an example of why this is the greatest sport of all, in my opinion. Um, great personalities, great characters, good, genuine, honest people, people who work hard. Everyone's got a story, everyone's got a journey. And uh, 2014 is going to be a massive year for British boxing and a massive year, again, for boxing in Hull. So spread the word about the show. Tickets are on sale. We're approaching a sellout. We will get there, I believe. And thank you, as always, for your support. We'll see you for some media workouts soon. Fight Week press conferences and, of course, the weigh-in on Friday the 21st of February. Thank you, as always, for coming. See you very soon. Thank you.